malware is one of the biggest single threats that we currently face. The reason why it is, is it sits in the grey area between what we know to be legal and what we know to be illegal. And several malware manufacturers in the States have threatened prosecutions because buried in the terms and conditions of the free software you've obtained may be your permission to install malware on your system. So malware is very much a legal quagmire. It's very hard for the antivirus houses to address the issue. So I actually think that that question is more to do with the political and legal status of the companies doing these. My personal opinion is there should be legislation in place to insist that a software contains additional software, that it's made blatantly obvious up front, and there's legal recommerce if there's not. If people lose data because of malware and it was obtained in a semi-legitimate way, they should have ways of getting that back, their money. How can companies protect personal data on smartphones? Uh, I would always have a simple answer to a hard question. Why do virus writers write virus programs? There's two different groupings, well three different groupings. I got corrected during my, my last session that there was three and not two. You've got people doing it for notoriety because the challenge is there, because it's their thing, it's literally their hobby, and it's to prove they're the best of the best. Those people are motivated by personal reasons. Very hard to do anything about that. The second group of people does it for profit. Okay, and you have a large number of criminal organisations now involved in writing viruses and malware. And the only reason why those organisations do it is because there's money to be made in it. And all you've got to do is go on to Google and look at people that have been prosecuted for spam. And you think to yourself, who can make money out of spam? And you would be amazed to find how many millions of pounds are generated by spams each and every day. The third group is the emerging group, and I would consider the most dangerous. And these are people motivated by political, moral, or ethical reasons. Okay? These people who are hack are normally called hacktivists. They do it because they have got a problem with a government, with a society's methods or means, with a, a political system. Uh, these people are the most dangerous because you can get them where they do not care if they're discovered, they do not care what damage they do, and their sole purpose is to cause anarchy and damage to what they view, maybe wrongly, as their adversaries. I heard recently about a, a friend who got a, a, an email from a bank that they thought looked dodgy, and they happened to know the chief information officer of the bank, and they rang him up and said, is this one of yours? And he said, oh, it doesn't sound like one of ours. And the guy rang him back a few months, a few hours later and said, actually, it was one of ours. <laughs> And if the bank can't work that out for their own emails, how is anyone going to work it out? I think it's, it's a really hard problem. So identity theft seems to be an increasing problem. Um, people worry, I suppose, about, about, about the stalker, about someone who actually wants to steal a particular person's identity, someone who wants to follow you around on Facebook and work out where you are and, and burgle your house. But I think much more often identity theft is just about being unlucky, that, that somebody trawls through a lot of information and you happen to be the easiest person to, to pick on. After your information on your laptop, they're trying to get access to what you have there, which is your credit card details, your banking details. So that's what they're after. The internet, all this fraud stuff and all virus writing, it's about money. That's what's driving people. These are not teenagers sitting in their back rooms writing viruses. These are now organized criminals using viruses to deliver payloads to capture users' banking details to then, to then siphon money out of their accounts. People have to wake up to the idea that the internet uh, attacks are now money-based. It is intelligent, it is targeted, and it is going to get worse. General advice for people to stay safe online. Be aware. Be aware that a threat exists. Be aware that you have no idea who you're dealing with when you're online. And take the really sensible precautions. Have you got a local firewall installed? Is it turned on? Have you got local antivirus installed? Is it turned on? Have you got malware protection? A lot of the good antivirus products do not provide good malware. So to make sure that the product that you have will protect you against malware. And finally, be paranoid. The father of a 13-year-old daughter staying safe online is uh, a concern for me um, and I think, again, it's, it's uh, being aware of what is happening. 
um, and, and also, I suppose, assuming the worst might happen and having a, a, um, a contingency plan, as it were. So in the case of a PC, that might just be backup. Um, in the case of a, a corporate, it's going to be a lot more than that. Um, and, and there are you know, layers and layers of, of solutions that you can uh, deploy. But I think the key one is the, is the behavioral one, is to make sure that uh, you're aware of what is happening and what people are using the systems for and constant, constantly monitoring it.